hey guys, look, I got my little snooter here. She's just being a little prairie cuddle kitten here. And I'm really excited. Pretty soon here, I'm going to have Victoria from rawvegan.se joining me live. We're going to go into her experience with raw food, living in Scandinavia, here in Sweden. And I'm sure she'll pop on here pretty soon. Hmm. If people don't know you, just in case people don't know you, uh, rawvegan.se, you live in, in Sweden out here and grew up in Sweden. And I've been into raw food for over seven years. Um, yes. Yeah. So what got you into raw food in the beginning? How did you, how'd you find this path and this lifestyle? Oh, uh, it's actually, it's a long story, yeah. uh, but um, I, I have always been like, um, yeah, I have had a very bad um, digestion and um, I have lots of inflammation in my body. I was uh, elite uh, workout in badminton, so uh, I al always get injured very easy and uh, I have low immunity, so uh, I I get like a sore throat every second week and, and I still work out and work out and, and, uh, and then I was also modeling so uh, my skin was, yeah, my skin was quite bad also that time because I didn't eat well and I, I have so many different, yeah, imbalances in my body. So I have always been searching for something that, that can help me to, yeah, to get rid of these problems. Uh, yes. So uh, I noticed that the better I start to eat, uh, the better I start to feel. And, um, and that, yeah, it brings me more into raw food because I noticed that the more fruit and vegetables I include, the better I feel. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so I started to, I mean, I have gone these steps like <laughs> almost everyone I do, like vegetarian, and then you cut cheese, and then you cut milk and egg and, <laughs> and all these things. So, so the more things I took out from my diet, the better I feel. And when I took the cooked food also off my diet, I noticed a huge difference. And um, especially in my skin and digestion, it really happens. Yeah, it happens a lot uh, that everything got just better. So, um, so that just keeps me stay here. And um, yeah, here is, I am here now and I haven't been sick for, yeah, six uh, six years I think, and uh, that's, awesome. that's awesome. And my skin is um, yeah, I have never problem with my skin. So, so how, how do you find that that affected like your badminton and and your modeling and stuff like that? Was that did that make it a lot easier, or did anyone who you were with comment or you know have any funny ideas around it? Yeah, uh, with my badminton it was. I don't know exactly because uh, I switched my diet when I was injured. Yeah. Uh, so I was away from badminton two years actually because of that. Um, so, uh, but when I started again, um, I come up to a higher level and I noticed that, uh, that I was more clear in my brain. So uh, I could focus better because you really have to, it's so much tactic in badminton. So you really have to be clear in your brain and focus and, and be fast and uh, so you you really have to um, yeah so you can uh, place the ball on the right place on the court yeah. uh, so that's what I noticed that and my energy was so much higher so I actually pressed it so much better and uh, the awesome. first competition um, I, I had after um, uh, after coming back, I actually won that competition, and no way. and I ate only apples for the whole day. No, nothing but wild <laughs> apples because I had so much energy. So I I didn't want to eat something else. I just want to have have my apples, and and I won that competition. So so it really made me made me well. <laughs> but That's then awesome. I I stopped actually badminton also because I I yeah I trained too much because I had so much energy. So I just well, it was too much for my for my heels, uh, yes. and then I traveling a lot because I was modeling. So, um, so it doesn't work to uh, yeah to stay on that. But definitely, I work out so much better, even have too yes. much energy <laughs> with yes. this diet. So when I was modeling, it was also so much easier because my skin it really clears out in this diet. So um, I I get jobs easier, and uh, when I have my job, they they didn't have to put lots of makeup uh, okay they put a lot of makeup but but put it on layer and layer and layer on the whole day because 
before that my skin was so so like oily so um so they had to put like powder <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. through the day and that was that was quite pain, painful actually so um so it made, made everything easier for me yeah <laughs> that's awesome so um what was your original inspiration you, you said you kind of just started researching and stuff but was there anything that that really jumped out or anyone that really cleared things up and made things just gel so that you you went right into raw food um, I, I have listened on so many different raw, raw food gurus out there, and um, um, so so it's hard to say exactly what this was. But because I have listened on so many different people, I have tried so many different things. Yeah. So uh, what worked best for me it was when I find Doc Graham uh, with the eighty ten ten diet, but um, it doesn't work fully. So I kind of adjust it. Uh, so. Uh, uh, yeah, because I, I also have my my best friend and uh, yeah uh, Don Urboom if you know who is it is uh, no, it was no. the most famous uh, famous people uh, in Sweden um, about uh, wild food and, and living food so uh, he gave me so much tips and inspiration and uh, so a kind of mix of that and uh, yeah with Don Graham so I use lots of sprouts uh, yeah. and. Uh, and I love to use herbs and um, and also spices. So uh, I include that lot in my, my new book, The Spice of Life. Yeah, that's beautiful. Because I mean, I think a lot of times people think that 80-10-10 or raw food has to be a specific box. But uh, yeah. to me, anyway, there is flexibility around these things. And when we're talking about a basis of our diet being around fresh, whole, ripe fruits and vegetables and you know other stuff like that, I think it's just an awesome, awesome way of living and eating. And I'm similar too, because I, you know, I include some things that aren't specific in uh, eighty ten ten, like you know, seaweeds and stuff like that. I, I do enjoy those, or barley grass powder. I like that. Um, yeah. but the basis is in fruits and veggies. Um, you know, about your book, you know, that's really exciting. So the book that you have, the Spice of Life. Uh, you want to share a little yeah. bit about it, and you know, what your inspiration for it was, and maybe a few of your favorite recipes that are in there. Not not exactly what's in the recipes, but what the recipes are. Yes, uh, what inspired me to, to do the book is, um, is because I, I wanted more, uh, I mean, I am so happy with just eating fruit and salad, but yep. I, I want to create more like kind of recipes that are similar to cooked food yep. and, uh, and really get the, a big variety and have these kind of spices and herbs that is so healthy for the body. So um, I have, uh, yeah, I get inspired by different countries around the world, um, like China, Mexico, Thailand, and uh, yeah, and different kind of, of, uh, of countries. And, uh, and took the best of the best and my favorite dishes I had when I ate cooked food and, uh, yeah. and then transitioned it to, to raw food and make it like, um, yeah, healthy, raw food, lower in fat style. And, uh, yeah, because that was uh, what I was missing. So, so I just created a book with that. Well, that's so, awesome. Uh, yeah. So that's that's so, one of the roadblocks people really have, right? Like, I mean, for sure, everyone likes fruits. And once you get accustomed to some veggies and greens, you start to like those a lot more. But yeah. there might be a celebration or there might be a devastation. You, you know, you have a hard day or and you just feel like something a little bit different. You know, you're, you're going out yeah. with friends and they're having a potluck. You want something different, right? And, and then those yeah, fruits exactly. come into play. Yeah, and and one thing I also missed in the raw food um, recipe world is like uh, gourmet food that is not like super super high in in fat and and dense and dehydrated food. I want to create more like juicy juicy things that that still have the little extra touch. And in order to get the little extra touch, maybe you use uh, some different spice mixes or you mm-hmm. use different textures. Um, and um, yeah, and different kind of new cool combinations that really makes you excited. So like I have some ripe tomatoes in my in my chocolate truffle, and that is very odd. That makes people like ex- ex- excited about it. Hmm, this is cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so so I really want to try to create cool recipes. <laughs> yeah, heck yeah. Well, I yeah. think you accomplished that. <clears throat> I highly encourage everyone to do that. So I, I'm I'm also curious just. You know, going raw vegan and, and vegan here in Sweden, um, 
you know, seven years ago, what was it like? Like, was there many people doing it? You know, did you feel like you're kind of alone in this realm of raw foods and vegan foods? Or I know you said you had your one inspiration for the, the fellow who has been vegan for a long time out here, but was he near, near you or was you just talking online or how did that work? Uh, when I started raw food here in Sweden, uh, it was much harder than it is now. Uh, it, I mean, raw food have really grown, and, and even veganism. And, uh, I mean, if you see restaurants, you can you can get vegan vegan food in in all restaurants uh, nowadays, but you couldn't you couldn't before. Uh, but raw food is is also much easier now if I compare to seven years back because. Uh, it's easier to get food because we have started to import that, uh, import more food here in Sweden. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, uh, so nowadays I, I tend to order food from internet, uh, yeah. like Fishland and Orchidena, and there I get organic food. And yeah. um, I also uh, like to go to different fruit shops, and, and these fruit shops, it was a, it was a few of them. But not a, a lot of them for a few years ago. So it have really happens a lot in the past year. So so nowadays it's so much easier than it was before. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, but the, it's still the, 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 the organic. It can be quite expensive here in Sweden. Yeah. But yeah. because we, I, 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 my belief is that if you eat the fruit and the vegetables that is in season. Yeah. and grow as, uh, as near you are as possible, it is more clean. Uh, so here in Europe, for example, it's more clean than if you go to, to America. For sure. Uh, and um, and we, when food is imported a long way uh, from your area, it's probably also more dirt on that. So, so Absolutely. I try to, to follow my, my own feeling, what's, mm. what's good and, and what sprayed and uh, yeah so um it makes a lot I, I, of sense to me it makes a lot of sense yeah. to me and it, it also sounds like you really <clears throat> you really do enjoy foraging and and growing your own sprouts and stuff yeah. which i mean that's you're not gonna be spraying i think i don't imagine you make sprouts and then put some pesticides on it so really yes. reducing there I'm, I'm, I'm curious like in terms of wild foraging both fruit and greens what are the two that you find you most consistently forage here in Sweden maybe in different seasons yes um, in summer time it's um, it's so much berries here in Sweden you can find like blueberry raspberry blackberry <laughs> you know this uh, and even wild strawberry and uh, and and then you have other other berries that is very uh, healthy for you but Maybe not so delicious like aronia berry and uh, and um, halton berry and ro rowan berry I think is called in English is a little uh, orange berry and, mm -hmm. and these kind of berries like uh, they are very very healthy like very tart. Some, like, rowan or uh, rowan berry have as much vitamin C as a whole orange so yeah. wow so I yeah. try to create lots of recipes with with these kind of foods so I I really try to use. Uh, foods from nature that maybe don't taste so good, but it's very healthy and make the recipes of that so they would taste good. So I can use this in my recipe. So combining that with dates, yeah, it can be yeah. a good smoothie. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, so that is what I, I find in uh, in summer and uh, and yeah, in the, in the beginning of autumn. And I like to freeze and I like to dry them. So I have them all year around. And with greens, uh, I have actually noticed that I live in Gothenburg, so it's not so, so much snow. And uh, yeah. so at, as long as it's not minus degrees and uh, and a bit, yeah, maybe uh, about five degrees or so, I can find greens the whole year, uh, yeah. like dandelion greens and, uh, and this kind of stuff. And this type of greens might not taste so good because they are so bitter for many yeah. people, but... But still, you can you you can really like yeah you can get used to these kind of flavors too. Yeah. Uh, because we are so used to it, that everything is sweet, yeah. uh, and even when you buy like broccoli and kale from a supermarket, that comes originally from from a dandelion. Yeah. <laughs> so if we have just hybrid hybridized it, so it's more sweet now. Um, so we really need the bitter things too to balance out the other flavors we have in our diet. So if you only eat sweet foods, 
We may have some different kind of problems with digestion or uh, or liver because digestion and liver really requires some some type of fitness. Um, yes. So I try to make good recipes with that and um, yeah, combine them with other other flavors so they really taste good. So I use wild foods whole year around actually. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, no, I I totally agree with. Uh... You know, it, it, you can't beat getting fresh stuff from your immediate setting and trying out different things. And it's also really cool, too, because like you said, like if you never had dandelion greens or even arugula or something, you might taste it and be like, oh, this is way too strong. But you start to have yeah. a little bit, you start to eat a little bit more and you start to enjoy it and crave it a little bit more. And, and otherwise, yes. it's, it's really awesome to mix it in. Like sometimes, for example, like I, I love dandelion, I love purslane, I love duckweed, I love so many different types. And, and lots I can get here, but sometimes yes. if they're a little stronger, um, or even if they're just higher in oxalates, like say a uh, plantain mm -hmm. leaf, you know, then I might yes. just chop them up and mix them in with a big salad. So it's like, you know, or a stew or whatever, right? And you can get a lot of uh, diversity because like you said, with those little berries, sometimes those yes. are so nutrient dense, you just throw a little bit in a recipe and it just brings everything yes. up. Yeah, it really does. And, and that is a good way to get more nutrition in the body too. And uh, uh, yeah, and uh, I, I have to tell you a cool thing about dandelion greens too, uh, that I really, how I really got used to that flavor. I started to take one date and put one leaf of dandelion greens and I ate yep. it. Oh, of course awesome. it tastes good because, because the sweetness from the date take over everything. So, so yeah, so it, it was awesome. And, and then the next day I took two dandelion greens and ate it with my dates. Yeah. And yeah, it still tastes fantastic and and they, then i just started to to <laughs> include the dandelion greens and yes. um and uh, yeah finally i i got used to the flavor so now i can enjoy dandelion greens without <laughs> anything else and yeah. uh, and that is just that is just a very good way to um to start learning uh, to learning your taste bed and you, you can do this with uh, with everything so uh, if you're not like yeah, maybe you're not like iceberg like this. Try to yeah. combine them with, with something that really takes over the flavor and just include it more and more and more in your own, uh, yeah, in your own temple. So uh, that's that so is, awesome. Uh, no, I can I can yeah. totally identify with that too because like uh, for a long time I didn't eat much dandelions I, and and if people don't know the whole dandelion's edible. So you can eat the flower, you can eat the stem, you can eat the root, yeah. you can eat the you can eat the leaves, of course. But you know when I was back home in Canada the last couple of years. Uh, you know, when it's dandelion season, I'm telling my mom, I'm telling my sister, like, don't spray them because they want to spray them and kill them off. I'm like, don't spray them before you're going to like, let me come and like, at least have a few harvests. And sometimes, yeah. you know, their whole lawn can fill big bags. And usually then I'll just either loosely chop them up or put them in bags and throw them in the freezer. And uh, yeah, sometimes right. I get like huge bags. And they're more nutritious and better for you than most of the greens in the grocery store, probably all the greens in the grocery store. Yeah, and, and they are more clean also because they, yeah. they are most sprayed with pesticides and, and washed with the chlorine water and you, you, you don't know what. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. And you also get like more enzymes and photons because it's, it's picked, yeah, more fresh. And, fresh. Uh, and there's got... more, more you get from that. So, and then you, you can, what I used to do also when, when it's uh, the flower season, I used to just pick all the flowers and yep. uh, then I dehydrate them in my dehydrator. And, um, and then in the uh, autumn and winter time and okay, the whole year, I love to make tea of that. That yeah, is so yeah. good and delicious, yeah. Dandelion's beautiful. It always, it, it, it always confuses me because people love flowers, but then all of a sudden like, we don't want those ones. We don't want those. <laughs> 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 Poor little dandelions. That's yeah. yeah. That's Yes, exactly. And, and the more I started, like the flavor, the more I also like how they look. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Your your whole your whole view of them can shift once you start to see them as something that's not only beneficial but enjoyable. And yeah, you know, I think I think that is kind of the secret too is just like testing them out. And what I've really found is that you know the body is super intelligent. If if it doesn't know something, it might be a little bit kind of like what's this. But once it starts to get to know it through like eating it and it being giving your body so much feedback then that's when all of a yeah. sudden the body's like yeah like and i mean if you, if you try something and you always hate it and you're like plugging your nose to me that might be like uh maybe it's not really ideal but 
but if you yeah. eat it once in a while and you start to really enjoy it and you feel good in your body with it, then you know, that's a pretty good thing. But I, I mean, it is always, it always imp is important when we're talking about wild edibles to make sure you know what you're eating because there are plants that can be poisonous and there can be lookalikes. So, so it's good to have some knowledge, especially, especially when we're looking at mushrooms and stuff like that. Um, yes, exactly. And especially when you eat mushrooms also, uh, mm -hmm. you really have to, to be careful. And, uh, and mostly mushrooms is, is not so edible raw. Uh, they are better when you dehydrate them because the, the toxic <laughs> things are mostly in the liquid. So when you dehydrate them, it will be better. And, um, and also marinade and in, in lemon juice and uh, yeah. Absolutely, it's, absolutely. Yeah. You know, th something that's really cool though, um, that's important because definitely wild mushrooms can uh, be a more un unsafe. You know, like there are some mushrooms I know that are out here that you can die from within a few days uh, of eating. And others though, like culinary mushrooms, whether we're talking about portobello or crimini or, um, you know, white button, any of these guys here, shiitake. Uh, there's a lot yeah. of information going around that says you have to cook them because of the garotene content. But the latest research has actually found that that's not true. And that yeah. raw mushrooms are totally safe to eat. Um, you know, I love to dehydrate them myself, but uh, some fear that is put out there about raw mushrooms isn't really warranted, which is pretty cool. Dr. Gregor has a full video on that. And part yeah. of it is because the mushrooms were fed to uh, mice and rats. And mm -hmm. they didn't really understand that it doesn't work the same way in humans. But just thought I'd point that in there because I'm a big mushroom, uh, mushroom head. I love mushrooms. Yes, me too. It's very. I love to use mushrooms in in savory recipes to to make like a meaty texture and and also to get the kind of umami flavor they have. Especially yeah. when you dehydrate them, they the umami flavor will will really explode in there. So so that's yeah. what I really like about it. Yeah, and it's also when the, I mean we live in Sweden and it's quite cold here, and mushrooms mm -hmm. have like warming component. Com com components i think you say in english yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah it's kind of warming to the body so um so it's very good to include i guess yeah yeah i, feel yeah, like I think they're a great part of the diet and they're really rich in certain minerals that aren't, aren't as easily found like they're actually rich in chromium and you can get b12 from some mushrooms and uh, yeah. they're pretty and vitamin d as well which are both of those are less common in most plant foods so it's a it's a really unique food that's for sure have you, have you ever went uh, mushroom picking for chanterelles or any other wild mushrooms out here in Sweden? If I pick yeah, wild mushrooms, either, yeah, if I uh, get right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah I, do, I do pick uh, wild mushroom um, sometimes. Uh, uh, oh, I don't know what the English is uh, in this kind of, um, but uh, it is like different soppar, we say in Swedish, <laughs> yeah. that are edible, uh, raw, but but this one can be a little bit hard to digest. So I used to dehydrate them and that can be, that is perfect. Uh, yeah, and also chanterelles, chanterelles yeah, is chanterelle. also fantastic. They are yeah. very strong when they are raw, but um, you, can, uh, you can also dehydrate them and that would be fantastic. And yeah. um, I like to, to just squeeze uh, lemon juice on, on them and, uh, and then I dehydrate them with the lemon juice and uh, and therefore, it, it will be a little bit milder. So, uh, yeah, that's a good The way. flavor just it's pops when you put that, hey? When you put the lemon juice on and dehydrate, it's just like... Poof. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Something so happens. Like... Yeah, yes. we've, been, we've been picking a bunch of chanterelles out in the forest and enjoying those and a whole bunch of other ones. But, well, not a whole bunch of other ones, really mostly the chanterelles. But... Yeah. <laughs> that's so awesome. So, have so... you... Sorry. Yeah, go on. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, um, so, you know, compared to Sweden, like you've, you've traveled around a bunch as well. How have you found the difference in, in living a raw food lifestyle and the, the types of foods you eat while you're traveling? Has there been other places you found a lot easier or do you prefer certain places? Does your diet change a lot when you move around or how does that work? Uh, yes, I... I, I want to uh, to eat the food that is mostly ripe and um, and grown in the country I come to. So so of course it changed a lot. It, it depends on where I come to and what the season is and and, and therefore. But uh, I think in Europe is is easier if I yeah if I will get both fruit and vegetables where that is good quality. 
but Sweden, yeah, it can be hard to find like very ripe fruit. So, so the easiest thing I think is is Spain uh, and the, the Canary Islands because there you can find so many different kind of greens and you also have the tropical fruits. Uh, now I am in Tuscan in Italy. Uh, with my boyfriend uh, Ocean, who is also in the Rovi Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and we find both amazing fruit and vegetables that are grown here and super fresh and super ripe. So, so like Italy, Spain, Canary Island, I think it's, I have found that that is uh, the best place to, to be. Uh, I love the tropics too, like Bali and Thailand, but yeah. if you want to eat greens, it's more difficult. But yeah. on the other hand, you have the tropical fruit that, that yeah, they, have, they tend to have more minerals and more nutrition in there. And you also have coconuts, that is a bomb of nutrition. Yeah. And um, I like to do like your techniques when, uh, when I don't have so much vegetables. So yeah. I like to bring some barley juice grass powder with me. Yeah, that makes things a lot easier, <laughs> yeah, right? So. Yeah, it's so much easier. So um, so here in Italy, I, I live like a king here. I mean, we have persimmons, with, uh, they are tree ripened with seeds inside, oh, lots man. of seeds inside, and they mm. taste like caramel. And we mm. also have this uh, fantastic, I have them here, honeydew melon. Oh, nice. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, the, these are also grown here and they are just so fantastic. And, um, and different kind of fruit and vegetables, uh, grapes. Oh my God! It, Some of the best grapes there. Eat different grapes this morning, and we just have so fun with <laughs> trying grapes. And I will. Uh, we actually made a video on that, and I have a YouTube channel, Robi Ganset. Uh, you can check that out. Uh, oh, awesome. We made lots of videos from from here. Out in, in Italy, have you uh, been foraging or finding any natural foods out there, or has it mostly been from stores or? Uh, yes, I have found. Um, I have actually found more than I than I thought uh, about Italy. So I have found dandelion, yep. uh, linden leaves also. It's very yep. delicious in salad. And, uh, and then I have found wild herbs like mint and um, and rosemary and um, and also Lots some let's see plantains I have found and. Yep. Uh, yeah, porcelain also. Yeah. Uh, so and different, yeah, some some uh, different other things that, yeah, I I am not sure they are fully edible, but I I try them and they feel like they are edible. So That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you when you when you got a lot of experience with wild wild edibles, you have a little bit more intuition, and there's always always of course techniques like rubbing it on your arm or then on your lip and stuff. Yes. But if you if you yeah. know. So, so just uh, who, who wash here, um, <laughs> never pick food if you, you're not don't. sure you can eat it. No, yeah, don't do absolutely. that. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, you, no. it, can, it can be disastrous and people do die from it. But um, if you yeah. know what you're doing, I mean, you can triple in check. The, in, Europe, in Europe, we have very few um, leaves that okay. are super, super toxic for you. And um, so, uh, so what I do, I just try a little, little piece and, and then I spit it out. But, but I mean... You shouldn't, uh, if you are in tropical countries, they can be very, very toxic. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but otherwise, when you, when you try a really toxic leaves here in Europe, they tend to taste awful and you just want to spit it out directly. Mm -hmm. And if you get a little, little, little tiny bit, uh, it's probably not going to hurt you, but, but don't, take, don't take any risk. Don't do yeah, that. no chance is needed. And, and, and yeah, there are, there are really common ones that are fairly easy to identify. And if you, you, know, you start looking them up online and comparing back and forth, it's, it's awesome because we all have phones now, right? So we can always like, you know, like research it, look at it, research it, look at it. You know, we found yeah. um, a whole bunch of really good stuff out here in Sweden, Malmo, one of my favorites ever, Lands Quarters. And there's, there's loads of uh, nettles as well, which can be really delicious. Have, have yeah. you ever tried um, a sea purslane? Yes, yes, I love it so much. Yeah. So salty, <laughs> right? That's like the saltiest. Yeah, I love food. it. It's just fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those are one of my favorites. When I, when I was in um, Sri Lanka, I've had it all over, but when I was in Sri Lanka, along the fences of a lot of the best surf spots was just tons of the purslane and I would just just mm -hmm. eat handfuls of it and it was, it was so so savory and also just really yeah. juicy and so delicious 
you can eat it like chips. Oh, sorry? Yeah. You can eat it like chips. <laughs> yeah, totally. You don't need yeah. any food. Yeah, it's so delicious by itself. Yeah. <laughs> they're, the, they're the closest green I've ever had to olives. Like, I almost compare them to olives, like, each one. Just like, oh, cool. So, so, so tasty. Yeah. Do, you, do you have a favorite wild edible? Besides, oh, dead wild, uh, maybe? Mm, yes, uh, that's hard. Uh, it depends. Uh, I, I have a favorite uh, that I don't know the English word, I'm sorry, but in Swedish it's called strandmolla. Uh, okay. Strand means beach because you find it on mountains near beach. So, um, so strand molla and molla is, is the name for it. So you have different kind of mollor that can grow in gardens and, and this kind of stuff, but the strandmolla uh, is very very salty. <laughs> okay, and it's a green. Oh. Is it is it like a, a low lying green or is it on a tree or how does it work? Uh, no, it's more like the no, it's a low grain. So it's yeah, yeah it's not a bush, but it it grows like yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. So that cool. is my absolutely favorite, and and of course I love dandelion. I mean yeah. dandelion is yeah one of the most it's universal and and they got the nice yellow flowers and they just pop up everywhere. Yeah. They are so easy to find and easy to recognize and uh, and uh, easy to use in recipes actually also and uh, if you use them uh, with the right combination they tend to to be very very delicious actually so uh, yeah you have to just combine them because they are very bitter you have to combine them with something that is sweet and something that is sour and something that is a little bit salty too and when you have, it doesn't mean that you have to put salt in there, but maybe some dried tomatoes or some dolls and, mm -hmm. and, um, and maybe spinach. Yeah, it's perfect with spinach. Nice. So, yeah. so if you combine them so we have all the flavors, so the bitter flavor doesn't take over everything. So everything is just in balance instead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have made dandelion salads that everybody likes. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> it's just hard. Yeah. So uh, combining is... How you use them is uh, is the key to to make them taste good for everybody. Absolutely, and I mean, people are used to that with strong pungent flavors like onion or garlic. You know, and, and like yeah. you wouldn't just eat that plain, but if you mix it with something, then it, it really it expands the whole flavor palette and and rounds it out. And it's the same thing; it's just using different pungents, right? Different bitters and and dandelion. That's yeah. a really tasty one. That's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. So yeah, I'm curious exactly. in, in your book, the the spice. Uh, Spice Life, is that, do you have any wild edibles or any kind of stronger foods in there? Are they mixed in there at all? Um, in the Raw Vegan Bundle book, The Spice yeah. of Life, uh, yeah. I don't have uh, like wild greens and, and so on because this is a book that that I want to, I, I want you to make the recipes wherever you are in the world. I know yeah. that the Raw Vegan Bundle and, and this book uh, I will sell after also, I will sell it all over the place on, in the whole world. So I want that my recipes should, yeah, you can make it, them everywhere. So that yeah. was my little goal for this recipe book. But I am, I am actually writing a, a book right now, yeah. uh, Nordens Raw Food, the uh, Raw Food in North. <laughs> oh, cool. And in that book, I, I have lots of uh, wild greens and wild herbs and wild fruits and berries uh, included in my book. So, so that is, um, yeah, that is the key ingredients in, in this book. So in this cool. book, I use like lots of sprouts also. So, um, yeah. yeah, yes. So That's exciting. So That's I, really I cool to hear. Oh. Yeah. What, uh, <laughs> what sprouts do you make most often? Oh, uh, I used to, my favorite is a mixture, actually, yeah. of uh, sunflower, mung bean, and lentil. Yeah. Uh, nice. I can actually show you, I, I have it here on my counter. We, we grow it here in Italy. <laughs> so it looks like this. Oh, cool. Oh, that's here. awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when you combine... Uh, one one third uh, sunflower sprouts and yeah. one third um, of um, uh, of lentils and and then um, and then the rest mung beans. Mm -hmm. This combination tastes tastes so delicious together. It's it's just 
something happen when these three are are put together in one. So I eat this like as a snack. I don't I don't put it on everything because it's so delicious on its own. And when I combine them with raisins, that is a perfect like airplane snack or um, a travel fun. food. I've done this combination so many times. This three sprouts together with raisins. Um, yeah. It goes everywhere with me. <laughs> you so have cool. them in acids and enzymes and, and sweet from the raisin, the sugar. Um, yeah, you have everything in a package. So that that is my to-go food. So so this tree com- is yeah, that is my my favorite. <laughs> so so for the that food. mix is and is that in the book? Is that mix in the book? No, it's not in the book actually. No, uh, so, well, uh, so you have well, to is- remember it. <laughs> So, so can I ask then, um, when you make that, do you soak all of them together? Like, let's say, like, you take a third a cup of each and just soak them all together, or do you sprout them separately? No, I just soak everything together. Yeah. I soak them about 12, 12 hours uh, yes. or over, overnight, and, um, and then I, I eat it two days after, and I just uh, uh, swift water... Um, um, no, not sweet water. I wash them um, yeah. two times a day, and um, in two days they are ready. Or maybe you can you can uh, you can sprout them longer too. But I, yeah. I like when when the sprout is short. So uh, cool. yeah, it goes very really fast. Cool. I'm gonna yeah, try that out. <laughs> I'm gonna try that out with with the sunflower seeds. Do you use the shelled ones or just like decent quality uh, already shelled? Pre-shell. No, I use a uh, shell one. Yes, uh, so uh, so they look like uh, yeah. So they they are just uh, shell. So so no no uh, no, no black uh, uh, skin there. So that that's also why I don't sprout sprout them so long because uh, shell is uh, is off. Uh, some of the seeds can be broken. So so therefore I don't get the risk that it rots or, or something like that. But yeah. yeah, they was they sprout perfectly. The the sunflower seeds oh. I buy in store. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a really fun mix. I'm gonna try that one myself for sure. And I mean, it makes yeah. really lots of sense as a as a travel food and as a you know like with the mix, mixing with yeah. the raisins and stuff like that. I I could almost even imagine just like having those and having like a travel sprout kit that while you're traveling you could be sprouting all the time. And that's really cool. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So people tend to have like. Uh, a, a bag with a mixture of, um, say, uh, nuts and seeds and dried fruits. And that is very heavy for me. When I travel and I don't move so much, I will have foods that make my circulation in the whole body going. And sprout is very good for that. Uh, so, um, so I like to use sprouts instead of nuts and seeds. Uh, so it's a, also a lower fat. Uh, yeah. So it's not so heavy. And it's filling and it's delicious. And uh, yeah. yeah, so that is uh, a perfect, perfect snack. Perfect way, way easier and to digest than just... Too. Sorry? Kids love it too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's fun. Yeah. yeah. And it's cool too because yeah, you soak and start to sprout the sunflower seeds and some of the fatty acids are turned into carbohydrates. And, and then you're also, you got the, yeah. the higher protein of the lentils. And it sounds yeah, like a really, really nutritious uh delicious and and uh, satisfying snack that's cool yeah exactly so if you and it's very easy to make say uh when you go uh, go up in the morning you can um you you just um, put water to the seeds and then in the evening you uh, rinse all the water and rinse the seeds and uh, put it in a bowl i mean i i i I actually sprout in in this bowl (laughs) so i don't even have a, a type of colander or so. I just put them here when I have drained them. And uh, in the morning, day after, I just rinse them once and put them in the bowl again. And in the evening, I have I have sprouts. So it's, it's actually one and a half day. So it's not so much work on that. And you can eat it the day after too. And, and then you can put it in the fridge if you're not eating it. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> and it would keep in the fridge for a very long time too, if they're not too wet. Yeah. Do you, do you keep them away from light or does it matter? Oh, like sorry. Do you keep them away from sunlight or anything like that or does it really matter? No, uh, I have uh, tried different things uh, with the, with sunlight, with the putting them uh, in dark place. And I really 
don't feel a uh, uh, difference between them. So I just use, yeah, I, I have it as simple as possible. <laughs> cool, cool. And last question on this, because I think, I think this is really great. And I think a lot of people are going to enjoy trying that out too. And if it's all right with you, uh, I'd love to include that recipe uh, on the video or on the blog post when I put it on my website, if that's okay yeah. with you. Um, yeah, do you, of course. How much do you find is like a portion for you? Like, do you, for example, would you take like a third of a cup of each and that's how much you make and it makes that whole container? Or how much do you make at a time and how much would you eat at a time? Oh, uh, it really depends. Uh, but um, if you say you have... Um, one deciliter. Mm -hmm. uh, so in, in one deciliter you have uh, mung bean sprouts, uh, lentils and, um, and sunflower seeds. Uh, what, so what, I, what is a deciliter? Oh, <laughs> a deciliter. Say, say five, ta five tablespoons, five or six okay. tablespoons. Yeah, yeah, five or six yeah. tablespoons. Uh, so, uh, so that is the amount I use to sprout uh, at the same time. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I, I eat the whole thing. And sometimes I eat half of it. Sometimes I just grab it. It, it really depends how hungry yes. I am, how I feel. And, and some people, they, they can't, that, that is too much for them to eat at, at once because they are not used to it. So, um, because it's lots of fiber and, and so on. And, um, mm. but, but for me, I can, I can uh, eat, eat it. Yeah, I can eat everything. Uh, but it's not like I do it every time. Sometimes I may have a, have a fruit uh, as a starter and then I eat the sprouts after and I may not eat all the sprouts because I have been eating fruit before uh, mm -hmm. or if I only have the sprouts uh, yeah I can eat I can eat the whole thing it's it really yeah it's hungry I am oh um so, I was saying yeah I was saying that uh it, it not only does it sound really fun and tasty just to eat but I could imagine it could also be used in in recipes and stuff like that and be a really fun mix for a bunch of different things. If you're making like sloppy joes or maybe a bolognese sauce, like put some in there or something like that it could be delicious or a, a lasagna. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I put this mixture on everything and I, I really love the sprouts by itself. Like mung bean sprout tastes amazing, lentil sprout tastes amazing and sunflower seeds taste amazing. But uh, the problem is that if you only eat mung bean sprouts, they tend to, the skin tends to be too much like fibers in the mouth. And if you only eat lentil sprouts, it's, it's like, yeah, it, it, it's, it, it can be really hard to digest, actually. And if you only eat um, sunflower sprouts, they tend to be quite strong. But when you combine these three, it's like something happens because the lentils will be more easy to digest because our mung beans have the, um, oh, what do you say in English? Um, the, type of um, um, smog, Sudra in Swedish. <laughs> oh. um, uh, it's a type of acid that, uh, okay. that mung beans have that is very good for digestion. So, uh, so when you combine these two, this is a just perfect mixture. And with the sunflower seeds, you, you make the whole mix less bland. So it actually tastes very good because the sunflower sp south sprouts have lots of flavor and um, they're a, a little bit strong too. So when everything is combined, you have, you have everything in balance. <laughs> Perfect. Well, you know, honestly, I'm, I think tonight before bed, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to soak some in that mixture overnight. And in two days, uh, I'll let you know how that goes. I think that sounds like lots of fun. Yeah. That sounds like lots yeah, of fun. Yeah, do that. I would <laughs> love to hear what you think. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I'll, I'll, I will let you know. And I'm going to definitely do that because I believe we have, all the, we have all those ingredients. I'm pretty sure. What, what, what type of lentil do you prefer or does any lentil work? Uh, oh, I, I use what I have. Sometimes I actually mix different kinds of lentils in ones because you, get, you have different textures. I yes. love to combine different textures. So, so a mix of lentils is perfect. But um, I, I have brown lentils. That, they are like green lentils, but they are a little bit smaller. Uh, that's what I have in here, in this mixture. But otherwise, I love the black lentils because the black lentils have, have so, so beautiful color. And they are also very, yeah, they, they feel like they're very easy to digest also. So, so if I, yeah, brown or black lentils is my favorite. But sometimes I use green or um, like this, uh, the fr uh, French lentils too. But the French yeah. lentils tend to be a bit harder and, and not yeah. that easy to digest. So, yeah, I, I take what I have and I, I really love variety also.
yeah cool yeah and it's inexpensive too a lot of people they think like oh like raw food's so expensive or, or organic greens are so expensive but when you incorporate no. some fresh fresh sprouted lentils or just any any sprouts they they're astronomically cheaper than than getting organic yes. whole greens in the store exactly and when you have like mung beans and lentils and uh, you sprout them they go for being um, yeah a bean or legume to have more like uh, vegetable uh, qualities in there yeah. because yeah, um, yeah the, the protein will become amino acids and the, the fat will become a, a fatty acids and the, the, the complex carb will be more simple carbs. So, so they tend to be like more greens or vegetables in their qualities. So, so if you are in a country that uh, you can find lots of greens, uh, the quality is quite bad. I mean, in tropical countries, for example, do some sprouts instead. So, uh, yeah. yeah, that's perfect. Sweet. Well, that's so awesome. I feel like that's a great place to leave us here. But thank you for for being on your channel and uh, and share this uh, this thing to you. It's, it's so uh, it's so so nice and yeah, interesting. Such a pleasure. Absolutely. Thanks so much for coming on and sharing all the things that lit you up and and helped you out over the years and. And your sprout mix, that sounds really darn cool. I'm going to include that too. So I hope a lot of people really try that out and enjoy it too. And thanks so much for both Thank of you guys being a part. Thank you a lot. Have a good time in Sweden. <laughs> Thank Bye. You so much. Thanks everyone for joining us. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.